So welcome back to the next Scala tutorial where we talk about classes and object. So this is Navin Reddy from Thurisco Learnings and let's start with it. So in the last, last video we have talked about how to assign variables I and mean also how to create a variable, how to assign the values and how to uh, add to uh, add to objects. Now when you, when you say you are performing some operation here, so when you are thinking that when you say 8 plus 7, so when you are saying 8 8 plus 7 so that's not exactly 8 plus 7 what we are doing is so we don't have any plus operator in, in Scala so everything you we use is a method so example if you use plus there that's a function again when I use method method and function that means the same right uh, not exactly same but this is a function so this plus operator here is a plus I mean it's a function because Scala is also a functional programming so that's how you that, that's how it looks so in this video, we'll let's talk about classes. So just to define that, I will open a Java. So I have two Eclipse in which I have, so in one I have Java, in, other, in, in another we have Scala. So in this Java part, what I will do is I will create a class because normally as a Java programmer, we have this habit of creating a class, right? And we'll go for a very typical example of student. We'll click on finish. Now in this student class, what we have is if I open that, so let's say in this student class, I have three variables. One is int roll number. And let's say only uh, yeah, int roll number, then we have string name, and then we have the last one as int marks. Okay, so I just have these three variables here. And so normally if you don't mention the type of the access here, that means it's a it's a package private, right? That means it is it can be accessible inside the package itself. Now if I uh, I, if, if I want a constructor here, so I, I can say right click source generate uh, constructors with field. Let's fetch all and okay, you got a constructor here. We can also assign, you know, we normally also use two, two other methods, which is uh, hash. I mean, because we, in Java, we follow the concept of Java beans, right? So in Java beans, we have to make sure that you have uh, getter and setter for that so we have to use getters and setters because we want to implement java beans here and what else we need uh, we need one more thing which is a hash function i mean the hash code method so we'll say generate hash code and equals so this is what we implement in java right so if you want to achieve all this thing in scala you don't have to write all this line can you imagine how many lines of code we are writing here we are writing approximately 70 lines of code you can see that 70 lines of code Let's do that in Scala, how we get a class. So I will remove all this code here. Let me get a class here. So in order to create a class in Scala, we simply use a special keyword called as case and we use a class and we'll say student and that's it. You got your class ready. Okay, that's your class. I mean, uh, of course you will not trust me, right? But that's a class. Now this thing here, this round bracket specify the constructor. So you don't have to create a class and then create a constructor. You can create a constructor as soon as you get a class. So you can specify the variables here. So I can say I have the first variable as var. Uh, I will say this is roll number of type int. Then I can say I have a var which is name of type string. And I have a int, I mean I have a var which is marks and it is int. So you can, you can compare this thing with your Java code. So if you can compare your Java code here, that's your Java code, right? So you can compare this with this one line. And you can also specify some default value. So let's say in this constructor itself, if, if we can create a default constructor here. So I can create a default constructor. I will say source and a default, where is default constructor? So a constructor with no fields. And okay, so I got a default constructor here and I can assign some values, right? I can say by default, if you if a student is not specifying row number, row number will be one. If he's not specifying the name, name will be by default, let's say Naveen. And if it's not specifying the marks, marks by default will be, let's say 90. That's the default values. We can achieve the same thing in, in student by specifying the values here itself. We can say the default value for row number, uh, let's say this is one. The default value for name is let's say Naveen and the default value for marks let's say this is 90. So we can achieve the same stuff here in one line. You see that? It's that amazing. 
And if you want to provide some definition here, if you want to provide some methods, you just open, have to open the brackets and you have to close the brackets. So with this three lines of code, we have actually created a class with a constructor with the, which accepts multiple parameters. Awesome, right? So now let's create an object of it. Now, how do we create an object? It's very simple. We can simply say, uh, I want to create an object like, uh, okay, hold on. How will, you, how will you create an object here? So it's very simple. We you simply have to say var, we'll say s1 equal to student around bracket. And that's it. We got our first object here. And you can see we got, we also, we, we are getting some instant output. We got one, we got a student object with the default values. Even if you don't mention any value here, it will take the default values. But we can change it, right? I can say I want the roll number as 4, I want the name as Rahul, and I want the marks as 75. Now if I create the object, we got the object with those values. In fact, we can also specify only 4. If I specify only 4, it will take, it will take 4 as a value and the remaining part will be taken from the default value. So it was taking the roll number as 4, that's the element. But this two is taking as it, I mean, is it taking as default. So that also means that it, we are also achieving constructor overloading here automatically. You don't have to do any stuff there. So it, we are achieving constructor overloading by default. It is that awesome. Because in Java, you have to create multiple constructors. So this constructor which takes nothing, then this constructor which takes everything, then one more constructor which takes only one parameter, next constructor which takes only one parameter which is name, one next constructor which takes only one parameter marks. It is very uh, hectic, right? Uh, so we can specify, we can pass two parameters here. I can say this is, let's say this is Rahul. So I'm, I'm not specifying the third parameter. So I'm specifying only one, two. So I'm specifying this is four. I'm specifying this is Rahul. So this will be taken as default. But what happens if I pass only Rahul here? So it will get confused, right? Because the confusion is, how, how would you know that uh, which method, I mean, which variable you assign the value. So in case if you are first, if you are passing the variable is not matching, matching with the first variable, it will give you error. At that time, I specifically have to mention that we assign the name. And you can see the name is changed, but uh, remaining thing which is roll number and marks is same. So that's how you create a class, you create a constructor and you create an object. But the, the thing which we do here, we have to write lots of stuff, right? We have to write lots of lines of code. You can see that. So this is the difference between Java and Scala. So if you are from Java background, if you have if you have done this, you know what I'm talking about, right? In Scala, we can write in the in those things in two lines. Again, there's a there's a learning curve here, but the only thing is it is worth learning, right? So that's it. That's it from this video. In the next video, we'll talk about how to define methods in Scala. Thank you so much.